know, did my hair just for you. I knew you, you were, so you changed exactly. your hair. Yeah, this is, you know, just a little switch up in between. I, I love it. I, I've it's been wanting so to go on vacation and this is my vacation hair. So it's I was perfect. like, that is called Let me just perfection in protection. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Um, <laughs> first, I must say thank you so much for this um, additional opportunity to just, you know, grab some light and wisdom and, and information on how to make my life better and our audience better. So thank you so much for focusing on Hollywood Melanin. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, we we really needed your energy. Like there was, we only had four minutes last time. So like there was so much that I wanted to like, ah, I want to chime in, but I gotta keep moving. <laughs> so thank you so much for being such a light and your existence. How are you feeling? I am overwhelmed and blessed at the same time. I keep saying, well, not saying, but reminding myself that I am living in the midst of something I prayed for yeah, and was very specific about the prayer. So it's, it's magnificent to see God move and see the evidence of him and how he answers prayers and, and just to see, you know, the benefit of the work. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm astounded and grateful for the opportunity and so excited to, I feel like I'm being granted the opportunity to, like carve a space and use, excuse me, use my body in a way that um, we haven't been able to see curvy bodies or like we've seen the glimpse of it or like the stereotype of it. So I'm honored at the privilege to be like carving a niche and feeling a role that I, I'm aware as an audience member was missing. So yeah, it's just, just very humbled. <laughs> you very bring humbled. a new awareness to that, right? Because yeah. I, you know, understand when you were saying that, I can only think off the top of my head, immediately I went to Jill Scott, mm -hmm. I went to Monique, and then it kind of gets blurry from there. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I can probably spin off 10 other actresses with, you know, beautiful bodies. Everyone has beautiful yeah. bodies, but it's very much a status quo. So you bring mm -hmm. a new awareness to that. I want to talk about, you're going to have to drop the masterclass because automatically with your energy, I just get this sense of inner peace. So <laughs> I'm going to need, you're probably like, girl, where? But I'm going to need. That is hilarious. I'm going to, to, to figure, that's, you know, I'm very happy about your accolades and what you're doing in the industry, but I need to know how you, how you, how you're fighting those inner demons. I need to, that's what I need. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's get in it because so I have not had my up. church today. Listen, I'm going to break it up in three different parts. We're going to talk about your confidence. We're going to talk about your courage and we're going to talk about your self-belief. Oh my so goodness. let's first start with your confidence. Where mm. do you find this confidence to be your absolute? I believe you when you say you are being your absolute total self. This <laughs> is Shaniqua. So <laughs> tell me how that came about. Um, I found the confidence to be myself in having, honestly, in trying to be everybody else and it not working in trying to be accepted, in trying to do anything to fit in or disappear. When the fit in didn't work, I was like, okay, well, at least let me like not be here so that you won't talk about me in that way. Okay, so I, I went through a stage where all I wore was sweatpants, all I wore was hoodies. I was just like braided down to dis And even then that did not sit, I was still, it was one, I wasn't being honest to myself, yeah. But two, I was also still being antagonized by the world. So I was like, well, I might as well show up as me as vividly, as boldly, as audaciously as possible, mm -hmm. because regardless of who you pretend to be, someone's always going to have something to say. So you have to ultimately, yeah, you have to live for yourself. Yeah. So that's honestly where I found the confidence in. I tried to be everybody else first and what that did didn't work out for me. What age did you decide, you know what? I'm going to just be myself. Y'all tripping. What, what you know what I, that? I really feel like that is the journey of my life. Okay. And so it peels back in layers at 
at each, like, I guess, milestone of my life. I just mm -hmm. went through recently this period of like, okay, I'm just going to let my stop judging myself so much and yeah. pull the reins off of my existence yeah. and just be like, you know what? You loud girl. Just be mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, or, and I'm not always all the time, you right. know, but like, I find myself, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I am my grandmother's grandchild. I am literally the reflection of this woman. And she reminds me of Jennifer Lewis. So okay. if that can tell you where my lineage yeah. comes from. Definitely. And there was so much of me just like not wanting to be my grandma. Just like not wanting yeah. to, you know, yeah. trying to control me. And I do yeah. that in saying that like, it felt very rigid, you know? Yeah. And like trying to like constantly second guessing everything I say or yeah. being like, oh, was that too much? Or like having just all of the um, anxieties you can right. give yourself when you're not living in your truth. Yeah. And then, so I finally had to recently, mm -hmm. the lesson was in the unpeeling was just like, girl, breathe let yourself be and if it comes out a little bit spastic you know what we can communicate and, we can and fill up, up. The, we can fill in the gap but what, what we're not going to do is live our living monitoring monitor, monitoring and filtering and yes. and watering down yeah in order to be acceptable by who right by who? right you know right. So yeah, I that was the that was the recent lesson. Okay. You asked for the okay. age. Yeah, but it so, began it began around 17. Around 17. 17. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. That's cool. Mine didn't you know, it wasn't that I, I was never afraid to be myself. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I was always ridiculed for being myself. Like I mm. felt like the outer world in just the way that, that I thought it was just never really matching what was going on presently. Mm. So I would always just, I was very heavy filter, you know, just, just going with the flow. Mm. And then I don't know. I just, I got, I, I would say it's definitely, you're right with the layering. It just, the more, the less I just cared. And it's like, you just get in that groove of like, you know what? I know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah and you either connect or you don't yeah um I really think we are in a era where we are accepting um sincerity and genuineness yeah. Yeah. as um as a currency right now and it's not quite like being like equated with having eloquence but I think we're just in an era where we just want to see authentic representation yes. and people who talk like everyone who speaks yes. like everyone and and there's only been one voice and one type and one for so long one perspective and that's why I think we're so like why we gravitate towards people like Cardi B's and why I even like I'm so grateful for her because I feel like she gave a voice to an odd to an audience that were or to a people not even an audience to a people that had been told to shut up yeah just like be quiet not only we don't we don't like the package we don't like the way it's wrapped we're Absolutely. not like we're and and so I love people who are just like themselves authentically and and I, who've allowed themselves to vocalize when literally everything in this world has told a black woman to shut up so like yes. every time we use our voice every time you do this it is activism you know Oh so, yes, yeah. I'm well aware. I am out here. I'm to you. <laughs> like, yes, I'm out here fighting with you know politeness, but I'm yes. gonna the business. Okay, mm -hmm. we are gonna talk about what our women need, what we see within each other. So mm -hmm. don't get me started, girl. <laughs> so getting into your courage now. Mm -hmm. So you have your confidence on you. That's a, another layer of armor of love, of self-love, mm -hmm. right? Now it's time to actually go for your dreams and not only go for your dreams, mm -hmm. accomplish them. You got to yeah. a level where you are on screen, prime time, okay? Wow. I am so proud of you, not really knowing mm -hmm. you, but proud of you because I know the extent of the background that people don't see. You know, mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by artists and there's just so much 
not lost, but invested into chasing your dream. So how Mm -hmm. do you then build the courage to like, you know what, I'm going to go to the auditions as myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go, I'm going to expect the unexpected. I'm going to accept whatever reality it comes from. So where did, how did you cultivate your courage? Mm. Um, Honestly, that courage came from having to build the confidence Mm -hmm. because honestly we some things is like unignorable right and I don't want to be like oh you know not the what was me but like some people can like hide it or fit in or you can kind of you know what I mean but I am who I am (laughs) you know what I mean and so in in learn having the confidence to express myself growing up in Richmond, Virginia, where there were not a lot, where we weren't as expressive. We live in a day and age where we are like, kids can dress the way they they want to now. People are allowed, there's a lot of self-acceptance and self-expression, but it wasn't that much too much coming out of like 90s, 2000s, you know what I mean? Everyone was pretty much like, the Nietzsche and Coogee sweat. Well, we weren't quite wearing Coogee, but we were, what were we wearing? We were trying. Dooney and Burke, you know, and baby fat ended up. (laughs) No, she didn't uh, say baby fat. And they, we can't say baby, but yeah, shout out to, we can't say baby fat anymore. No, we can, we can. Okay. I was just, I was just resonating with that. <laughs> with the baby fat. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess in like informing the confidence to like be myself yeah. um, and learning to have to not care what anybody else think, it kind of gave me the courage to go into these audition rooms and give all of myself and not necessarily care what they think, but not care whether the, whether this opportunity was the door or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I was blessed with a mama who believed in me more than I believed in myself as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an incredible, I have an incredible support team. Um, and then honestly, just knowing my calling really yeah. just being absolutely gung-ho assured about what the Lord told me and about about what I was here to do and not taking no for an answer and whether it became whether it happened today or I never was like oh five years from I mean I am a five years and a projector and a long end but I always Mm -hmm. imagined as soon as I graduated out of school I was going to be in the next Bow Wow movie you know it wasn't (laughs) like uh, (laughs) oh 10 years from now I'm gonna build it it was like right now tomorrow you got served too you know um so (laughs) that did not happen for me (laughs) but I think it's it's like you know it's just like being completely and a hundred percent confident in yourself and confident in that dream and that vision plaster it on a wall you had to be almost kind of like slightly I heard I think it was Will Smith it was like you have to have like a slight bit of delusion yeah. when it comes to the amount of con- belief you have in this thing that you cannot see it is faith it's faith you know and so you have a tr- you'd have to have a tremendous amount of faith but I think that every time um, whether it be the booking or it being a no, to me, every step is a step closer. And yeah. so just seeing those things for what it is as well, even okay. if it isn't your door realizing, okay, this gets me closer to mine, mm-hmm. help me build the courage as well. Absolutely. And it actually, so it's like a train, you know, everything is connected by some mm-hmm. type of latch right so that even brings us closer to self-belief so this is a really hard one um Mm. that I personally struggle with is self-belief because it's not something that you say that you don't believe in yourself you you always believe in yourself right but Mm -hmm. what does that actually mean as far as putting Mm. it into action and and having the consistency behind it right Mm -hmm. that is for me what I am, st- I am still collecting data every time I get on an interview with anybody I'm interviewing. How do you stay consistent in your self-belief? What are you doing every day that confirms that you know what you're doing? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that, so self-belief, what, how, how has that been a powerful to- tool for you? And how have you kind of harvested that within mm-hmm. yourself? 
Um, to me, when I hear you talk about self-belief, for me, what really resonates, and I find myself asking the 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 question and, and phrasing it in this way for myself, I always ask people who I know who are extremely hard workers, it's like, how do you do it even when you don't feel like it? Or how do you do it even when you're, you know, when it's not fair, when you don't see it, what makes you get up in the morning and keep going even when? I need answers. You know, exactly, because I got to put it in my box too, you know what I mean? For when I got to, you know, the days I'm feeling low, here it is. Right. What so-and-so said on this day, you yeah. know? Um, and I find that for me, I am incredibly future oriented. Mm -hmm. That is honestly sometimes on uh, that being being so future oriented has like saved my life a couple of times. You know what I mean? Ooh, that's it's strong. Like, it, it, it's strong. It's like down to the point that I'm like, even in the way that I date, it, it, it affects my romantic. Like I, I don't for the longest time, it was hard for me to even date a man that I couldn't see like forever with. And I'm like, what's the point? What are we doing? Yeah, if I'm like, mm, he don't fit in my five years. You know what I mean? Like, so what's the point of like, I can take myself to dinner. You know what I mean? So I'm really just trying to like battle like, oh, the date in because it's cool. All right. Versus like, what future? What is the future? Where are we going? How do we build? And so I find that those <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I can't be, I got to reclaim my time and have it now. And I say that in the midst of going through a breakup with somebody that I was currently dating. There's the two. <laughs> I, hey, I get um, it. I, I had to break some hearts this week. You so. know, like, listen, the future is now. It's listen, here you, right now. You know now. what? It's just, it, I it's don't want to see that we plan it, today. But it's here. You just, you, you have to respect each other. Time is, and I hear you when it, when it comes down to it, it's about the time you know, yeah. it's about how I feel myself worthy of the best possible love that's out there, because that is what I'm going to give. It sounds like you were an all in type of gal. So mm -hmm. if you're all in and you're not getting that or you, or he's on a different page of like, let's just see how it goes. No, I already see how this goes. I already been to the future and back. Your parents don't get along with mine. I'm here to tell you now. So let's just end it here. I don't know. We need to have dinner, go out for cocktails I'm immediately. You. I'm you are you. talking my whole entire existence right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> like, I am you. seen. I am seen. <laughs> really and truly. Because honestly, you. like, aren't we? I really feel like every movement, everything we want, well, you got to be leading me somewhere. Yeah. We got to be going somewhere. Because even as friendships, as a friend, when I give you my time, I am agreeing to sit in this vehicle with you mm -hmm. and we go on whatever we doing and we go, at the end of the day, it's gotta be going somewhere. Even yes. if we decide that we ain't doing nothing today, we've right. decided to depo deposit in relaxation, but we gotta be going somewhere. I need to know what we're doing. <laughs> I need to see it. I, I gotta to see. see I, Cause I'm building a empire, sir. Right. So I don't have time for the lollygags. I done enough of that. I gotta go. Y'all are playing. Yeah, I hear. Yes. I hear so you. Okay. On <laughs> when I am feeling low, honey. Mm -hmm. When I cannot get out of my bed. Mm -hmm. When I can't think about my why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know who. I know where I want to be in five years. That and usually that is the I know, principle. and that will help me. Yeah. I know. Okay, even if, and then beyond that too, it's also like okay, even in this moment, if I don't do nothing else today, mm -hmm. but read a script. Mm -hmm. In that reading of the script, mm -hmm. I'm already an inch closer to where I want to be than when I didn't. Yeah. So even if I, if I gotta move slow. <laughs> The process, what, right? Even if I have to today, at least I am moving. At least I am exactly. depositing seeds somewhere. So even on my lowest day, if all I can do is, okay, I wanted to work on an accent today. That's all I got right now is to watch YouTube videos and work on accents. Ooh, then it's we're getting doing scary it. in here. Do you know? Okay. All right. Let me tell you something. I'm going to give you an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> no. So... I, and this is, 
is actually tying into what I was going to say. And I wanted you to weigh in. Do you feel like your level of, I recently asked for or recognized in myself that I don't have the same obsession as my friends who are in different industries. I'm, you know, I have musician friends, I have director friends, I have, you know, all types of different artist friends and they're obsessed with their work. They, if they're not actually like nine to five office job working, they're they're working on where they need to go. Mm. And I recently asked for, or recognized, and I told them like, I need that obsession. I need that obsession. Mm. Next thing I know, I get a script emailed to me and Mm -hmm. they want me to be in an English accent. So I'm like, well, first of all, I've been studying this my whole life. I feel like everyone everyone tries to do an English accent. But Mm. the point is, it was the it was what I asked for in the universe, and that was that mm-hmm. level of obsession. So, do you? The reason why it triggered me is just it sounds like even at your lowest point, you can meet yourself. You set up a barrier where it's just like you're still going to be focused on your work, even if you're not okay here. You know to go back to your work. Um. Well, honestly. And it's so funny because I used to, the work was always, me and the work were one and the same mm. up until, you know, COVID, which right. like gave us a little bit more separation of identity. And we got to see ourselves outside of just Absolutely. how we, the world, we project ourselves to the world. Mm-hmm. And so it's interesting that you say that because that was how I, how I usually go before, but ultimately, honestly, artistry just fills me. artistry helps me and I know that sometimes though on my lowest days right because that's what like let's let's go into like mental health right depression it removes your your wants and desires to do what you love Mm -hmm. so say if you're someone who's dealing with depression and you Mm -hmm. and you what helps you feel better is to do your artistry but yet it removes your desire and energy to do anything you love. How do you feel yourself? Mm -hmm. Um, And I find that it's honestly, it's giving myself, taking it so slow. Mm -hmm. It really is just like, okay, reminding myself that even if it's feeling like work, Mm -hmm. right and right now I need to and this is only when when we're object when the objective is to heal and to fill right right if it's feeling like work let me flip it in a way that turns it into nurturing how can I be inspired by what I love to do again Mm -hmm. what can I do to help in that way that the artistry can now fill me because Mm -hmm. it's a lot of the artistry is us manipulating right it's us giving to it it's us pouring into it it's us studying it but we have to remind us of the reason why we fell in love with it is that it gave to us as well and so on those days where I'm feeling low okay how can it give to me again what song do I need to go back to what movie was it that that inspired me that I reminded myself and it was one point too that like Cause I got COVID for Christmas. So honey, she was low. <laughs> Ooh. So Ooh. it was at one point where I was like, I don't even want to really want to watch movies, but I can right now I'm journaling and I can journal about the films that inspired me mm-hmm. and in journaling about the movies that inspired me, it rekindled my inspiration for the art again. Mm-hmm. So I really think it's, it's honestly, it's just one is holding on to the moments that inspire you, the moments that fill you and reminding yourself what they are when they are coming Mm -hmm. so that the days when you need them to fill your tank again, it ain't nothing Mm -hmm. for you to just pull it out of your vault. So one is like having some, the self-belief or the triggers or the the road to self-belief or to building your case to to building your tool belt to help you for self-belief is self-awareness. And so those moments that you're feeling good and it's something inspiring you and that movie has filled you or that conversation has has pricked you, mark a little thing and be able to go back to it and constantly pull from it before or again. And just to add to your journaling, because I caught something when you said journaling, (laughs) because journaling is my life. I love 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 writing. Um, So just to add to, to the toolbox, I believe journaling also is like a, is a textbook. It's you studying yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go back 
Because there was a lot of times where I would get into a certain space, a certain dark space. I'm like, why am I here? Why am I here? And I went back in my journal and it, I wrote it down. I wrote down the trigger mm. and I was like, okay, I know what's bothering me. Because a lot of the times I don't even know what's up. I just know I'm sad. So, Come on. Yeah. yeah. So journaling, that's, that's a, that's a part of me that, you know, a lot of people do write, but they don't reflect or review. You got to go back. You got to go through and the days. Yes. Like, okay. This is how I got, this is how I got into it. This is how I got out of it. This is what I need. You know, mm-hmm. so don't get me started on journals now. That's, That's good. Thing. It's the book of you. It really is. I was, um, read, I don't remember what book I was reading, but this man was like, I wanted to get into shape again. This is really redundant. But it's like, he's like, I wanted to get in shape again. I wanted to be my same. I went, he went, oh, he happened to find a picture from like five, like five years ago. And so he went back to his journal from five years ago to see what he was doing. And then did that workout plan and was back in that shape. And I'm like, listen, it's just it's amazing. A, it's literally a, a, a study guide. It's of a study you. guide of self. Yes. Cause sometimes we forget there's too much going on. There's so much to retain. So put so that many thing things out so are coming in. Room. Mm-hmm. Oprah yeah. journals. <laughs> Yes, she does. Oprah said the journal when I found out Oprah journaled and that's how she like really got through I was just like yep yeah, I'm gonna journal like Oprah mm-hmm. um, so moving into your projects I can already tell you are a, a renaissance woman I know it's not just one mm-hmm. thing for you and it never will be I think you're happiest when you're juggling multiple things am I wrong how do you are we I'm just telling you now? because it's me I'm just telling you because it's me and me and you I'm just saying it's like for real it's a wrap you're <laughs> at my wedding like for from now on every moment in my life you <laughs> <laughs> with my camera phone we <laughs> But yes, so talk about your projects. I tried to do some digging because I have to do some light stalking in this industry. And I was trying to find your music video, but ain't no music video that I Ain't no music video, nah. So talk about it. I want to know all about what genre you're tapping into. You know, what, who inspires you musically and, and what, what's, what's next in that? I'm so excited. Um, I am working on my first single will be is something about you. It's very R and B, like Tony Braxton, Aaliyah mm-hmm. aesthetic. Um, mm-hmm. When I heard the song, the track, I immediately thought about those women, and so I wrote something that I would that I imagined would fit into the world of Harlem. And that's why I'm so excited that the video is being directed by Megan Good because I know. So it's like this beautiful like collaboration. My the first show, my first TV show out hard. Look at you and releasing this first song. And like honestly, I really would love to at some point do some music for the show. And so I think you're this going song to. Specifically, We're just gonna go ahead and accept that. Put that in the pot. And then, and then we're fitting to it. Um, so yeah, we are we're we had started shooting at the end of last year. Okay. And then we start shooting again um around like the second week of February, and then that'll be the wrap on it. We can release it because I'm ready to go. I have like a whole like two projects ready. <laughs> that you're about to birth. You about that to have I'm twins? about to birth. Is that what you're telling so, me? Yeah, I'm yeah, <laughs> she and Lyba or something. <laughs> so let me let me talk about the birthing process so there's no confusion on here yes but yes. the birthing process with a project because I've actually watched one of my musician friends who um is coming out with her project and just to watch her go through the different stages from demo to recording mm. and she's on top of it she even did a demo video before the actual video so they know what wow. shots to get so I, she, I wow. just kind of witnessed her process and her birthing this project. And I was like, so are you going to take a break? Like, how do you feel? She's like, no, I'm ready for the, for the next one. And I was like, okay. So it's definitely like an adrenaline rush. And I'm mm-hmm. so excited for you. I am mm-hmm. elated that it's coming out of you. You know, just the soul that you already have. I know whatever mm-hmm. you, whatever avenue you put that in, it's going to be just over over the top oh you know god saying? bless you thank you I'm excited. so we have the music now are you yes. into writing 
I am into writing. I write my music. Um, okay. And it's honestly, I've been writing music since, again, like since I've been journaling since elementary school and in different music groups off and on since middle school. So I've been writing music for a while and, but never, I don't know. I, it was always a dream. Beyonce is like the influence yes. um, for me. And so honestly, but I, I don't know if I was ever going to do it, but God's always like kind of made it impossible for me to ignore to it. it. Right. Yeah. Every pivotal role in my acting career has been music involved. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, Same. it's almost like you think you don't want to, you, you're acting, well, not even think you want to do it, but you're scared and I'm going to force you to do it with this talent that you think is a little bit more safe almost, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and so during the um, pandemic, my homeboy, well, this guy I had met like one time, he's a, um, a musician, his name is Official Feature. Mm -hmm. He and his homeboy, they had like Gucci face masks. And this was right after um, Amar Arbery and right after uh, George Floyd. So okay. like seeing black men in an open top with right. Gucci masks, it just like filled my heart with mm -hmm. joy. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to him and he, and within the next day, we were in the studio together. Mm. So I say like, he really like brought music to my front door. And since then just been writing and recording. And now I had like two projects and an album later on that yeah. hopefully, well, it's done. And so it's She's just done. a matter of getting these visuals. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And and so I want to actually touch base because you mentioned the track, like hate you. Uh, who was the producer of the track? Who's who's part of? Oh the my team? gosh, I cannot. I found him on YouTube, and I think his name is Timothy Infinite. Okay. Um. So yeah, I, I found it. <laughs> and I honestly don't know how I found it because at the time I wasn't like looking. Now I go on, you know, I'm looking for beats. But right. at the time I was, I just moved into my place and wasn't. Yeah, you, trying you to work stumbled. on an app. I stumbled upon upon this beat and it just felt nostalgic. It felt like R and B, and I was mm -hmm. like, "Oh yes, please!" Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited to. And it's from there it birthed other. It created. It was like the song that like birthed the rest of the music process in my life, and so yes. it was nice. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so bringing it back home to Harlem. Harlem. Like <laughs> I want to talk about how it's pushed you as an actress because this is something mm -hmm. that you had to do consistently while on top of a, p a pandemic mm -hmm. and you know while kind of finding your ground you mentioned that you moved so it's just like how has that pushed you as an actress who is under the consistent pressure of being on because you know, you did interviews, you did mm -hmm. other releases. I'm sure you went around the globe real quick. So <laughs> talk about, talk about that. Talk about Harlem. Harlem. Um, Harlem has blessed me. It really has. And I've been like praying for this. I remember um, maybe a couple of years ago before I booked it and before like um, I had done a couple of pilots, but this was like even before that, I was like on my mom's couch. I was really Angie sleeping on my mom's couch. <laughs> crying to one of my friends and like girl I just want to be you know I just want my own show because for me and I'm so traditional but it just felt like I wanted to be as an actress I was like I just want to be married like I'm out here single in these streets I'm out here auditioning for all these <laughs> and I just want one TV show that I could be yeah. faithful with <laughs> like, yeah. and amongst all the other things as amongst well all the other things you know, but I really wanted to coming from theater and loving theater. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm so grateful about this show is like, it's to see a character build. You get mm -hmm. like uh, the iconic characters that I, that we grew up on, like Whitley and, and Urkel and the Dwayne Waynes and Khadijah and Maxine Shaw's and all of those. And, and what I always, as an actor, the dream is to grow with a character for right. years. Right. And so to be able to do this with someone that feels as iconic as Angie, that feels as fun foundational to like 
to the black experience. Did I lose you for a second? Yeah, but okay. you, your your audio was going. You good? Okay. <laughs> but that, she just feels so foundational to the black experience, to my upbringing. So I'm really looking forward to like seeing her shift and growing with her as an actor yeah. over the next years. Lord be it. That would be okay. I was amazing. like, is there a season? Yeah. Oh, Wait, let me so open up my ears. Dream is the dream is the hope. <laughs> um but you know official word yeah but yeah that's what I'm especially someone as vivacious it's I know Angie's going to shift and pull me because already I've had to learn and grow about using my own voice and confidence in yeah. from Angie she's someone who does not allow her circumstances to reflect how she feels about herself right it's like who she is is so solid yeah. and um it forces you to be that way because that's why she's so so abrupt so off right. cuff you know like she says the truth because she is the truth yeah. you know and so that having that mirror in my own life is like mm -hmm. sharpened me and allowed me to see myself differently so yeah I can't wait to grow with her um and yeah, and yeah well, I'm excited to grow with her too yeah we're all excited and like ever. the show itself I I remember telling um, one of my friends about the show and he was like, oh yeah, my mom watches the show. And she had hit me, um, before, I think it was after or before I had the uh, interview and mm -hmm. she was, she went, she went berserk. She was like, you did not just talk to the whole cast. Like it's, ch I could just tell that it's changing a lot. It, it's, I wouldn't say changing, but confirming the movement that's mm -hmm. already in play and hasn't been in play for a very long time yeah it's like here we are black mm -hmm. women strong smart confident funny this is what it is this is our personalities multiple multi-dimensional yeah layered and wrapped up nicely in a bow for you come on <laughs> yes so I thank you that. again for all of your energy and positivity i mean there's so much more I want to get into, but the last thing I'm going to ask is just what would you do in a situation where you were left with limitless budget? So this is pertaining to your show. Limitless budget. Yeah, I'm on we're gonna manifest today. Limitless. On a okay. Manifesting. So limitless budget, any any production channel you want um what what would your show look like what would it what would it be my tv show your tv show okay well i'm working on a show oh um and it is a musical university um it's a it's a college musical kind of like um like a fame meets um school days okay Debbie Allen. and i would love limitless budget i would love Nick Cannon as one of the leads in it as a professor. I can see I would, that. I would love, um, Pharrell is already my EP on Harlem. So I would love him to be the EP on it. I would love it at Amazon. And I would love it to star somebody like Normani or Ryan. Um, I, like I think that would be beautiful faces to like, I mean, I know they're probably, they might not feel in the same, the college demographic, but they are still there and grownish. Yeah, they're yeah, the yeah. grown. Come on up in that college and, and lead the show. <laughs> I'm getting, so, yeah. I'm getting like what, I, I don't remember him, his name personally as an actor, but he's phenomenal. But what, um, that person did for Hamilton, I don't know his name. Do you know his oh name? Oh my gosh. Emmanuel. First of all, multi-talented guy. Incredible. Crazy. And it's like Emmanuel Lynn, Lynn, Lynn Manuel, Lynn Manuel. We'll look it up. We'll Google it. We'll put it in the copy. <laughs> but <laughs> But that's what I'm that's what I'm envisioning, that type of stage, because I think it mirrors the theater and it mirrors the modernness that you have like you have a very modern feel to you even though you're soulful mm -hmm. you're very tomorrow if that makes yeah. sense. yeah 
And that's why I'm, I feel like our kids haven't been talked to. I feel like outside, they've been kind of ignored. Yeah. There's a pocket. We, we've had, thank God, for Grownish and Zendaya and yeah. Yacht. And you know, but there's been a kind, and I want to, I want to talk to them. They need some guidance so that they're, they're not like them. learning from thirty year old women. They need, they need somebody their age. Right. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? She Cause don't be it. like us. We still be young. Be fun. Listen, you know? we're still very vivacious and young. But yeah, you know, that we've true. been through some things. So. Exactly. I don't want, I don't want my fifteen year old cousin doing exactly what I'm doing. Not the you exact know? same thing. Yeah, I'm like, well, I could give you cheat codes to this process, can, but there's something I can teach you. Definitely, definitely. That's what I'm just. That's yes, what yes. we're gonna leave them with. Well, thank uh-huh. you so much, Shaniqua. I could literally talk to like hours, girl. Hours. Same. Same. So I so appreciate. Um, Thank so you where for can they find me. you? What's your Instagram, social media? I am Shaniqua Shande across the board. S H O for the Shaniqua, and then S H A for the Shande. You made it so Shaniqua simple. Shande. You probably had to get down to a science. Like, how can I make this simple for you? Yes, because people go S H O S H O, and I'm like, no, 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 S H A S H A. Yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> find it find the formula thank you yeah. so much for lending your focus your time your energy your patience you. with hollywood melanin we appreciate you thank you it's been a blessing i appreciate y'all <laughs>